we've seen them go down 0-2 before, and then even with Kawhi and, and, and bring back and come back and win the series. Now, I don't think that that's going to happen this time around. It's just going. It's just going to make it. You know, it may push it to six or seven, and that's. I think that's where you're at. They'll probably even a score here, two two, go back to Phoenix, and then basically ping pong back and forth from there. Now, Cameron Payne's injury though, a bit, I, I that could just, change things in this series. I was man. just about to say that, Han. I and I think went down in the was the first quarter of that right? Yes, he turned first ankle, quarter, never came back. Never came back, and particularly in that second half, I was like, hmm. And they missed him. Well, yeah, hmm. I mean, his length. His energy, I thought that the pace yesterday, and I, I was sort of vacillating between is it the Clippers' defensive energy or is it CP3 feeling his way back into the series? Because the pace absolutely favored the Clippers to me. Mm-hmm. There was entire at every level of basketball, I always say coming down, set up in your half-court set is a tough day of work at the office. And you could see it all over Devin Booker, who they were absolutely keyed in on, and rightfully so. When that Phoenix Suns team gets out in transition, they only had 10 transition points last night. Like that, mm, I Cameron think Payne's Chris a big Paul deal. missing all that time. You can I tell. think it's a little bit of both what Monica was saying, though. You, Chris Paul misses some time trying to get a feel for mm-hmm. everything that's going on again, plus the adjustment side of things. When you lose somebody in the middle of a game, now coaches got to make that adjustment yeah, to, to try f- to figure out okay, we didn't anticipate this, we didn't go into a game with this type of game plan. Now you have an opportunity when the game's over with. You have a day to adjust and come back in game four Mm -hmm. and figure what you lost in game three. Plenty to talk about there with adjustments in Ty Lue, which we'll get to. But but a bigger story, again, Chris Paul, 5 of 19. He does return to the lineup but struggles with his shooting. Devin Booker, again, struggles. 5 of 21, 1 of 7. Patrick Beverly basically uh, just blanketing him the entire time. (laughs) But what we should also point out, though, is Paul George without Kawhi. Again, stepping up. Remember, he misses the free throws. If he hits those free throws, this series might be 1-1. Now it might be 2-1 in their favor. You never know, right? That's how close things came in game two. But PG plays 43 minutes and gives you 27 points, 15 rebounds, 8 assists. Now, he did have six turnovers, but he also, again, had the ball in his hand a ton. And he played, again, really well. He's had strong performances here now for the Clippers. And take a listen to what Doris Burke had to say. that She was on the call ESPN Radio. Um for the game. And it's become a thing with Paul George that we do that when he doesn't come up in the clutch, when he has these performances sometimes like he did in game two at the end, where we tend to go right away to criticizing Paul George. And this is Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. So take a listen to Doris Burke saying she's had enough of people criticizing PG. I am so tired of people being critical of Paul George. He's played every other day since June 2nd. He has carried an enormous burden. He has led the playoffs in minutes and touches. And in the fourth quarter of game two, big shot after big shot. Yes, he missed the free throws. And yes, he probably didn't help himself calling himself playoff P. But he is fighting through incredible fatigue. 27, 15, and 8. Pipe down, critics of Paul George. Pipe down. That's straight mm. talk. Right? Straight talk wireless. No contract. No compromise. Explain Peter, to we- me who. We are. Do we criticize <laughs> Paul let, let George me know too who much. we is because I'm not part of we. I, I just really want to know. Cons- you mean, I, I'll be honest you with you. Like I'm not media? either. Well, I'm not either because <laughs> I don't crit- – like I feel like this. Tell me if I'm crazy, guys. Paul George, I don't know if he's like, – I think some people in media that criticize him have him at a higher level than I think he should be. I don't think he's a superstar like we did this yesterday. Who's superstar? Who's not? He's a really good player. But he doesn't have he's enough. He's an all-star basketball he have enough, player. He doesn't have enough trophies to get that kind of shine. He's I, an all-star basketball yeah. player that has a big contract and, like Monica was explaining to me, has a signature uh-huh. shoe. And so much comes with that in expectations when you are a leader of a team like he was in Indy. He was supposed to be the guy in Indy. But guess what? You know, there's, a, there's another dude not – far from you in Cleveland that you kept running into That's right. that you're not going to get over because nobody was he getting was over in that. Miami at the but, time. Yeah. And so, key, I think, oh, was he in Miami yeah. at the time? But I think that's a big part of it, right? Yes. Like there was, there seems to be a promise unfulfilled. When we saw Paul George at earn the signature shoe deal, he ran into LeBron a bunch, but he also held his own, right? And so that was the projection. And then arguably it hasn't necessarily panned out moving forward. Listen, I love Doris Burke as much as anybody, but... I would counter that with, well, Devin Booker's been on the floor, too. If we're going to go star power in this particular series, now, granted, the Phoenix Suns have played less games. They handled their business. But I don't know that doing what we expect means that we should back down. 
as that superstar, you can't miss those free throws, point blank, period. You've given us the moments that continue to remind us why you have not lived up to but the But I love how I mean, he you play basketball. Though. He did bounce back. You play basketball. Monica I, played at Georgetown. She's the third most popular oh my gosh. player in Georgetown. Here we go. I played history. a little basketball. And I asked you, though, because you played a, at a higher level in basketball than I did. You miss those free throws. It happens. Mm -hmm. I've watched it, all sorts of superstars miss free throws at the end of games, even though their percentages have been high. It, I've watched it before. So, I, I, again, as consumers, we consume in moments, right? It happened as we literally followed, not to get too much into Twitter, but it was funny because you could see the dialogue being like, oh, we owe Paul George an apology. And then the free throws is like, wait wait a minute, no, we don't. You know what I mean? Like, that to me, signature shoe guys, you have those free throws in the conference finals in that moment. There's no question. There's just no question. You can't do that. Well, that's the and clutch so, gene. And, that, and that's That's it. what we want out of your superstar is the clutch gene. And so uh, for me, I think what has happened to Paul George is, while if you dig into the numbers, terrific score, great NBA player. The promise signature shoe guy has just not been fulfilled but yet. But that's not, uh, but see, for me, that's not his fault that he has a signature do, do deal, <laughs> shoe deal. Yeah. What is he supposed to say? Oh, I don't want a shoe I, deal? No, I agree no, with I'm you. Not, I'm not, not that guy. But I'm telling you, yeah. but I agree with you, but <laughs> as soon as you say, excuse me, yes to that, it, like, the eyeballs are on, the pressure is on. 